Thank you for that warm introduction, and I will correct it. The founder, Mudith himself, and uh, his co-founder, Gaurav, could probably uh, tell you way better um, about uh, Dozy specifically, because they created it, but it is, you know, their leadership and their ability to uh, engage with others and bring together a team uh, that's equally passionate about it. Uh, I was really happy to uh, hear some of the words that were spoken around technology, you know, uh, as an engineer, uh, when I heard someone talk about the fidelity of AI and uh, integrating that, I was like, you know, am I speaking to a, a group of engineers now? You know, when did the vocabulary of tech meet healthcare? And uh, Mudit did touch upon what ballistocardiography was and how he was inspired by race cars. Uh, it is also, from a co cross-disciplinary aspect, the first instance of ballistocardiography was demonstrated in 1873 uh, by research inspired by seismology, you know, earthquakes. Uh, where they were graphing, and uh, uh, I like to think that maybe a, a slightly large man stood on stood on this graph, and uh, a, a plot that uh, occurred uh, showed that it was able to, you know, ink and paper was able to pick up something very similar to what the heart was doing. Uh, this was very very exciting, and uh, today, of course, we have digital ways of doing that. But fundamentally, ballistocardiography and is the science of vibration. Um, you guys will be familiar with it from, you know, echo, where it is uh, an echo or an ultrasound also uses some sort of vibrations. When you auscultate patients, when you're listening to, you know, crackles from the lungs and all, you are looking for vibrations. You are looking for the sounds around vibrations. So that's the slide I was talking about, which is the person standing on the scale and how it was inspired by race cars. So why haven't most people heard of BCG? You know, I'm assuming, can we have a show of hands beyond those who are dozy? Has anyone heard of ballistocardiography before today? That's great, couple of hands. So very honest audience or very hungry and sleepy audience, one of the two. Uh, but uh, so back then, think of it, the turn of the century, the 1900s, electricity was just, you know, sparking a revolution. And uh, ECG was discovered. And think of vibrations, right? When you step, it causes a vibration. P people are moving, so it's a very noisy signal. And we didn't have the computational power to be able to extract the clarity that ECG did. So if you see like a publication trend, right? There was this huge surge of ballistocardiography vibration, then ECG came about, and one U-shaped curve happened. Uh, somewhere around 2015, um, again, interest started picking up, patents started being filed, a lot of things started happening uh, because the technology was there. Sensors have become smaller. You know, we have more power in our cell phones today than what took the astronauts to the moon. That sounds really unbelievable, but it's true. So as computation power increased, as we could add artificial intelligence to augment the human intelligence and the capacity to do these calculations, BCG started seeming more viable. I won't go into this at all, because why bother is totally clear. Why we need systems like this. And again, it is not about replacing, people mentioned you know, the heart, the head, the hands. Uh, BCG and AI-powered technologies are really there to you know, help get information to the head so that the hands can move faster and you guys can focus on the heart and the human aspect of it. It's to make your hands work better, work smarter, and in use of actual patient care and not documents and papers and phone calls. So this was already touched upon briefly, and you can see a demonstration outside. And I honestly, um, when they talk about the sensor sheet, but let me focus on that little white blob that you see. That's the dozy pod. Uh, that's what's receiving the vibration data from the sensors, and then it goes to the cloud. Uh, just the data, not the human. It just goes to the cloud. And our AI, or the algorithm, lives in the cloud. Meaning, at a, in the software, it's able to process this noisy data, the movements, every possible vibration it's getting, and filter it out into meaningful clinical parameters, and then display them. So that's the connectivity, and that's the aspect. And why bother with the cloud is so that you can access it remotely, anywhere, continuously, on your phone, on your tablet. It takes very little bandwidth uh, from that perspective. So it's all about signal to noise, right? So what you see in the black 
is the kind of signal you'd get if you just hit a piezo. Uh, and what's behind it, the little waves that you see in green, um, are the extracted signal of ballistocardiography. The small little pips, like you guys are in healthcare, even without telling me if I say, uh, which one's the heart beat, which one's the respiratory beat? Which, which wave do you think is the respiration? Which spike do you think is the heart? Um, I can see a lot of nods, so I think it's pretty clear. And where the AI again comes in, is we take those little bips and the spikes, make them a regular aspect, and it is applying pattern recognition. Most people are used to image processing and AI used in CT scans and whatnot. This is applying a similar pattern recognition to those bips. Whatever you could see with your eye and nod in a matter of seconds, right? Kudos to you, you guys are expert. It took us years to get the computer to see those same patterns and we do it extremely well. So this is just for context, this is not live. It's because people understand the mechanics of the heart. So to tell you the potential, right? Imagine if every mechanic of the heart, you have your valves, you have your atrium, you have the, uh, you know, the larger blood vessels like the aorta, if every movement is captured and characterized, imagine the information we could tell without ever touching someone, without needing to kind of reposition probes all the time, that's the potential of uh, BCG. Similarly with breathings, right? Uh, imagine if every time there was a difference in lungs, if there was fluid buildup, if there was a puncture, if there was a PE, if there was a change in the way a lung is mo moving, or in long term, if you're monitoring someone at home, do you not think like a tumor or buildup of tar would change the mechanics of the lung physically? BCG just captures the physical changes that are happening both outside and inside your body. So the potential is huge, um, and that's what we're focusing on. So in the R&D team, what was presented here is the tip of the iceberg. Dozy right now can, and I'm sorry if the font is too small, that's just how much R&D we're doing. I'll tell you more about it. Uh, we do vitals. Uh, we have an alert system. We're one of, uh, we're very, very uh, strong in terms of being one of the world's first contactless blood pressure mechanisms, as well as uh, being able to create individualistic baselines for health monitoring at home. There's so much under clinical research even right now. We have a whole slew of partners that is looking at being able to estimate the cardiac output of the heart, to be able to estimate you know, lung functions or instances of apnea or deteriorating of the lung functions themselves, as well as movement disorders. Because while I talked about extracting signal from noise, the noise itself in patients with Parkinson's, in patients with different syndromes, paralysis, the noise itself can become a diagnostic marker if used correctly. And that's all I have to say. Um, I wanted to do my bit to kind of keep it together and get you all to dinner quickly. I'm more than happy to discuss anything with you guys offline. Uh, this is a very Q&A type of interaction, so I hope, uh, I hope you found it interesting. Thank you.